when did you first hear about Easy E like, growing up? When I first heard about him? Yeah. Uh, man, I was, shit, I don't know. I don't even know how old I was, but what I do remember is uh, I was bumping Ice T uh, six in the morning. And, um, you know, I thought that was the greatest thing that I had ever heard as far as hip hop was going. And then my brother came to me. I remember we were sitting in the parking lot waiting on my moms and pops to come out of the grocery store. And my brother came to me and said, man, if you think that's the lick, you need to check out this cat, Easy E. And so he played, uh, he had it on a, on, a, on a cassette tape. And he played the song, I think it was Boys in the Hood. And, uh, you know, when I heard that, I just, man, I, I thought like, okay, well, then that's the realest of the realest right there. And, then, you know, it wasn't nothing sounding like that. It wasn't nobody sounding like that. It wasn't no music recorded like that, no lyrics recorded like that. And, uh, you know, from that point on, man, I was, I was in. I was in the game, you know what I mean? And I just remember following, man, you know, Easy and the, and the albums that came out and the NWA projects and the NWA records that came out. Now, I remember I was working at the Warehouse Records uh, in Fontana at the time. I was working at Warehouse Records. And uh, every time that NWA, you know, dropped the album and it was coming through, you know, and I opened up boxes and, and I saw a new NWA product, man. You know, I mean, it was just the greatest feeling to me, man. I mean, those, those dudes made the best records, you know, in, 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 in hip hop, man. They, 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 they changed the game. For, for the whole face of hip hop. I just remember we, one time we were filming uh, MC Ren's Call It What You Want, and we're, we're in Van Nuys Airport, and we're flying this hello helicopter around, and, and Easy's watching, and and, uh, and and then after we, we shot that scene, we wanted to crane through a window, and the guy at the airport goes, I can't let you break that window. And I said, well, we'll pay for it. And Easy walks up and goes, we're going to break the motherfucking window with or without your permission. <laughs> there you go again. Hey, You're nosy and shit. Um, what? <laughs> he always said, might as well. Might as well. I don't know where he got that accent. It's like, he's, he's from Compton, but he sounds like he's from the South. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I just got here and everything, and uh, we'll check it out in a minute. He just had such a funny way of, of asking you to give a lot more than, than than you were giving. You know, he was get a water truck in here, what up those girls, and you have a wet t-shirt contest. Might as well, and uh, we did it. Benicia's <laughs> garage used to have. Little mini bikes. Let me need a you know, lot more, more mini bikes. Oh yeah. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't go. And I'm like, I said, I'm just too busy and shit. And told the fucking, you know, he, he he did what he wished with his day, you know. But Tokyo would go over there to Easy's and they get in the river bed and they hop on these mini bikes and they fucking ride for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> you know. That's cool. That's nice. And it's funny because after. You know, he passed. I know one day me and Toker we were fucking gambling at some casino or something. We won a bunch of money. And we went to, I don't know, Western Auto or somewhere. We bought like four or five new bikes. <laughs> <laughs> and we kept it moving, you know. We would go to the riverbed and just fucking just ride. Say one time we was we were at the house in Norwalk and uh, had some kids here. You know, I came to the door, one kid knocked on the door and was like, uh, does Easy e live here? And uh, his bodyguard turned and was like, yo, he's a kid. So he walked in the door and was like, yo, the kid ran off. He then came back with a gang of other kids. And, then, and I was looking at these cards. Easy had these, uh, these cards made, like remember the old baseball cards? When you flip them one way, they switch and, and change faces. He had this one where he was looking around the door and then you flip it and then he turned into a demon holding a rat. You remember that? It was like, ugh, ugh. And he gave it to the little girl, man, and signed it. And I was salty. I was like, oh, man, you know what I'm saying? I wanted that. So then later on, everybody's out in front riding skateboards and stuff, right? And uh, he got his shirt out, you know, big belly, hair wild and whatnot. He say, hold on, cousin. And he runs in the house. So we all out in front chilling. You can see him running down the hallway, 
right? You can see him running down the hallway. He throws a skateboard up in the air and jumps up on him with name like the white boys do. Woo hoo! Clack clack! Comes down on the sidewalk. I was like, this nigga bored. And what not David? Yeah, real shit. <laughs> real shit. <laughs> What it do, y'all? This cocaine. When I first met Easy, uh, I was like in uh, '89, going into 1990. Uh, above the law, got signed through Laylaw. Uh, that's who actually landed me the deal at Rufus Records. And uh, you know, meeting Easy for the first time was amazing because he had a calm demeanor, but he was on point. He was sure about his business. In the street terms, he was a real nigga. And uh, the corporate terms, you know, he was a real businessman, but in the godly terms, he was a real person. And, uh, you know, you know, without Eric, I, I don't think I would be here this long. So, you know, big ups to Easy e and that's how I first met Easy. This is the official Easy e jersey. Yep, I stole it out of Easy es office back in the days. And Eric, I was like, oh, I got your jersey. He was like, oh, that's nothing, yep. This is the official, authentic baseball jersey. And back in the days when I used to go in the office, Jerry Heller would be sitting up there with his deuce deuce like, yeah, I got this for you when you come in the office. out. He's like, cause you's a real gangster bitch. I'm like, so what my You don't have to have your fucking gun on your desk like I'm about to do. He's like, no, you know, you, you guys fucking make me nervous. You know, Jerry Heller, he was cool with that was scared in a motherfucker of us when we come in he'd be like here come them la bitches oh my god i'm just you know fucking call the twins stand at the door you know i'm like why are you guys doing this easy e signed us you feel me so yeah i stole this from eric but i did tell him and he wasn't mad no more but this is easy e's real jersey rest in peace well one time one time we were in his uh he had a white uh 64 with no no hydraulics. Some they were clean though, really really not with sounds. The first time I ever heard Black Superman was in that car, and I remember I fell in love with the song because it was so bonking in that white car, bro. So there's one night I guess he took it somewhere to get picked up, and he tells me he throws me the keys to his Mercedes Benz, his big his big 700 whatever 600 whatever. Back then it was the big body one. He goes, Julio, drive, take my car home, follow me back to the house. This is back in the, to the valley. So he's driving the white lowrider. So I'm going down 101 and I'm getting off on Topanga Canyon Boulevard. Cause that's where he, he lived on, he had a spot that was on, uh, oh yeah, he lived up then, up Topanga Canyon going up the hill. When I'm taking the turn getting off, the brakes bro, there's no brakes on this fucking Benzo. I mean, literally, man, I mean, I'm, I mean, I must have fallen to the floor, bro, like, just barely, like, barely, I mean, barely missed the guardrail, dog. And I'm like, I, I still remember the moment, I remember my heart was like, oh my God, I'm gonna crash this guy's, not only his car, but I'm gonna crash. And I was, man, I was panicked, man. So I made it, I been mean, barely, bro. I thought I hit the, 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 the thing, right? So I get it curves out, easy was behind me. He pulls up next to me, and my face is white. He pulls up next to me, and I'm like, yo, man, how can you tell me, man, I forgot to tell you this shit ain't really got no brakes. I mean, I mean, I'm on Topanga Canyon Boulevard, I'm like, dog, this is a hundred and something thousand dollar car, you need no fucking brakes? Hey, man, take this shit to the sir. Yo, man, I gotta take it to the service. I mean, that's the kind of, you know, and then I was like, man, when we got to the house, I was like, man, that's fucked up, Eric, man. Man, I would have fucked that car. Man, I got insurance, man. I got insurance. That's how it was, bro. He just, I don't know, it just didn't mean nothing to him. I remember one time he tells me, we're driving, he had a white, a white, um, uh, 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 a Jeep, uh, what you call it? Not the Liberty, but the big Cherokee. And he loved that white Cherokee, bro. And I used to wonder why he drove it so fucking much. Because he had a Benzo, he had a white, beautiful eight something, I mean, whatever, a uh, uh, beige, a uh, BMW. He had all kind of cars. <clears throat> and he tells me one day driving, he goes, man, you know this is my favorite car? Really? This is your favorite? And I like it, you know, this is your favorite car, really? It's my favorite car, man. Had all them cars, man, I don't know why, man. I just like this car. I mean, he was like such a regular guy that, like I said, he just didn't mean, it didn't really mean nothing to him. I think he was just ballered out already. He, he done it all early and just, 
he's seen money and done the car things and it was nothing to him no more, you know what I mean? So, you know, I, it was all kinds of stories with that dude. That guy was crazy with the cars, man. No doubt about it.